Hey, what is going on everybody? My name is Roddy and you're watching my channel, Roddy the Brand. Today we're going to create a RESTful API using Node.js, Express and MongoDB. If you found the video useful, consider liking it, subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and give me a comment below. Now let's jump on a computer and get started. Welcome everybody and let's get started. The first thing that I'm going to do is create a new project folder and I'm going to call this REST Movie API. Let's enter this folder and create a new project and to do this I'm going to do left shift right click and open PowerShell window here. This will basically cd to my project folder that we just created and the first thing that we need to do is initialize a new project by doing npm init and then dash y to skip some of the questions. This should take a second to do and as you can see it's created a default project for us which we can start using. If you look in the folder you should have this package.json file and we should be good to go. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is install all of the dependencies that are required for this project starting with npm i for install and then we're going to have course and course is basically allow our API to be accessible uh, from all origins but of course you can limit it to a specific one if you wish to. .env is the other dependency that we're going to use and this dependency is basically is going to allow us to store variables, database strings and so on. We have express as we're going to be using express to start an express server today and finally we have mongoose for the database. If you press enter this should take a couple of seconds and the next thing that we need to do is do npm install again and we need to do dash dash save dash dev and I'm going to install nodemon as a development dependency just because I don't want to be restarting the server manually every time we make a change. This is what nodemon is going to do for us. Now I'm going to open the project in Visual Studio Code but feel free to use whatever code editor you wish. Uh, it doesn't really matter. All you need to do is go to file and open your project folder. That's what I have here at the moment and the first thing that we're going to look at is the package.json file. Now inside the package.json file we have all of the dependencies that we installed here. Depending on when you're watching this video the versions of those dependencies might differ but the other thing that you need to notice is that we have the development dependency here and that is nodemon. I want when I start my project nodemon to run it so what I'm going to do is copy nodemon and inside scripts I'm going to create another line. This one is going to be called start column and then I'm going to put nodemon and then the app that I want to start is going to be called app.js which we're going to create next. Let's save this, close package.json and let's start by creating our app.js file. Now this is going to be our main file for the project and everything else will be kind of linked to this. So in here we need to include some of the dependencies that we need, we need to set up some of the middleware and we need to obviously start an express server. To do this let's start by including some of the dependencies. So const express is the first one and, and that would be equal require and then we require express like so. Then let's do const course which is going to be equals require and then we require course. We also need to require .env but .env is slightly different. We need to require it by doing require and in single quotes we can do .env like so and then we need to put .config and close this. That's it. Now we need to create an express server and to do this I'm going to do const app equals express and now I can use this app to listen to a port number which we need to create first of all so const port and this is going to be equals we can either put a default port of 5000 or whatever you wish whatever is available on your machine and if you want to publish your API somewhere you might want to add a environment port so to do that you can just do process dot env and then port or 5000. That's it. Now let's set up some of the middleware. The first one is course so euro is usable on all origins. So app dot use and we're going to use course close open close and that's it. Okay now we need to set two more middlewares and the first one is app dot use express dot json and if you want to have a look at what this does you can hover over and this is going to 
give you a small description so returns middleware that only passes JSON and only looks at requests where the content type header matches the type option. And then we need another one, app.use. And this one is express.euro encoded. And for euro encoded, we just need to put one option, which is extended to true, like so. Let's close this. And if you want to know a little bit more about this, this is a middleware that passes euro encoded bodies. I'm actually going to create my routes in a different file, just so we're a little bit more organized but we, you could potentially list them in here if you wish to. So let's do a totally different file. And to do this, I'm going to do const route equals require. And then we're going to require the file, which we haven't yet created, but we will do in a second. So let's do server, route, and then I'm going to call this something like movie route. To use those routes, we have to do app.use. And then inside here, we can just put slash and comma and then we use the route that's it and the last thing that we need to set up here is or app to listen on the port that we created so what we have to do is app dot listen and we pass the port number so port which we created here and then we can just console log something helpful so something like console log and in single slanted quotes i can do something like listening on port and then with a dollar sign and curly brackets, I can pass the port number like so. We are done with the app.js file and we might as well create the whole project structure now and start building everything one by one. The first thing that I'm going to do is create our .env file, .env. This is going to hold all variables. Then I'm going to create a new folder called server. So server. And this folder is going to contain our controllers. This is also going to control our models. And this is also going to control our routes. Okay. Inside the controllers, let's create a controller called Movie Controller. And this is going to be a JS file. In models, we're going to have two. So the first one is going to be called db for database.js. And this is where we're going to add all of the MongoDB settings. Uh, so we can connect to the database and we can reuse this file anywhere we wish really. And the other file that I need to create inside models is the movie schema. So what I'm going to do is call it movie.js. That's absolutely fine. Inside routes, we need to just create our routes file. So I'm going to call this one something like movie route.js and that should be absolutely fine. Now I think let's start by building a simple route and a simple controller and then we're going to look into the how to connect to the database and we can start building our project. First of all, close everything except movie route and in order to be able to use the express router, we're going to have to bring express again. So let's do const express equals require and then we require express just like before. And then to bring the router, we can do const router and now we use express from here. So router equals express dot router okay now the next thing that i want to do is bring our controllers so basically all routes are going to be listed here but each route is going to be linked to a controller and the controller is basically going to do all the queries for us to do that i'm going to do const and let's call it movie controller and this is going to be equals require and then inside here we require the folder which is two dot back controllers then movie controller we don't have to specify the file here so i'm just going to leave it as this and close and then inside here we can start listing the app route so let's do something like one more route inside here we can list the app route but before we do any of the routes a very important thing that we need to do is export this router now to do this we can do module dot export equals router like so and now hopefully if you go back to app.js this is what we've done we've linked our routes here app.use is using our routes and we've linked them in here and we've actually exported that so that can be used let's build our first route and let's build our first controller just so we can test the application before we start building anything else under here under app route let's build something simple to build a new route we can use the router dot 
and then the first one is going to be get. So the request for this one is going to be get, but we're going to also use post, patch and delete later on. Now inside here, this is pretty much what the URL you want it to be. And if you leave it a slash, this is going to be kind of like the home page. So it's going to be localhost 5000 and that's it. That's going to be the home page. But what I'm going to do in this video is I'm just going to do it a little bit more specific and I'm going to do an API slash movies. So if I go to this route on the web browser, it's basically going to hit this router and I want to link a controller to it. So the controller can do all the database stuff and rendering as well. So to do this, I can do comma, use the movie controller that we've linked like so. And then I can do maybe let's call this one list movies, something descriptive. So we know where it is and close it. Now we need to create this controller here, list movies to do this. Let's go to the Explorer and open movie controller and let's build one and then we'll build the whole page later on. So let's do, first of all, let's do export dot list movies, which we just created. And this is going to be an asynchronous function because we're going to be using try and catch. And this is going to have request and response. And then after that, this is going to be a arrow function and in curly brackets, this is where our logic is going to be. Now, the first thing that I want to do is just test something very simple. So I'm going to do rest.send and I'm going to send hello. Well, like so and close. So hopefully if we start our application, which we can do from the PowerShell and to do this, we can just do NPM start and this should start to application. If you get the node one starting node app.js and then listening on port 5000, this means that our app is working. And if I go to the browser quickly, so let me open it. So if we go to the browser super quickly, localhost 5000, we obviously don't have this route here. We haven't created it, but the one that we created is API slash movies and that's it. So I've zoomed in a little bit so you can see, but we are getting hello world, which means that our router is working. And if I do one, two, three, save this, Nodmon should reset automatically. And if I restart the page, refresh, sorry, you will see that we're getting hello world, one, two, three. Okay, this means that our application is working and now might be a good time to connect to a database and do our first query. Okay, so there are a couple of ways that we can do this. I'm actually going to use the Atlas, which is a cloud version of MongoDB, but you can also use a local one. And if you want to do that, you can also do that and, and still follow along. You will need to go to docs.mongodb.com slash manual slash installation and install this in order to use the local one. And also, if you want to use the local one, a great tool is MongoDB Compass Community. It's a really good tool. You can actually use it locally or you can connect to your or you can connect your cloud cluster. As you can see, I've done it before. And this will basically list all of your databases and you can browse through them and so on. I'm actually going to use the cloud today. But saying this, I will show you how to do the local one as well, if you wish. Let's go back to uh, MongoDB. Obviously, you need to have an account. I'm using a free shared cluster. You can just create one from here if you haven't yet created one. And a very important thing that you need to do is give your database access. Now, what this does is pretty much you're just going to have to create a username and a password. Make a note of uh, the password because we're going to need it shortly. And the other very important thing that you're going to need to do is to give yourself a network access. Now, if you go on this, this is pretty much going to ask you to give IP access. And all you need to do is add your local IP and then you can start and you can connect to at last and start using it. That's pretty much it. They make it super easy. You can just click network access, add new IP, and that's pretty much it. And for the database access, you just add a new database user. Make note of the password because we're going to need it in a second. Okay. Now, if we jump back to databases, the, the first thing that we need to do is go to connect and click on connect your application. This will give you a string which we need to copy. So I'm going to copy this, go back to my project and open the Explorer and look for .env. This is going to hold all variables. So I'm going to create my first variable, which is going to be called mongodb underscore URI. And I'm going to put this as equals to the string that we just copied. 
Now there are two important things that you need to do here. This is the username that I have created and I need to paste my password as well. So this is where you get it from, the database access. Once you do this, enter your password here. I'm going to replace it in a second. And the other thing that you need to notice is the database name. This is the default database name, my first database, but I want to change this to something like movies. So that's another important thing to look at. And let me just replace my password and I'm probably going to hide it from you. And if you wish to use the local version of MongoDB, what you can do is we can create another variable. Let's do MongoDB URI and I'm just going to do it underscore local. And in order to use that, you can just do MongoDB column slash slash and then localhost. And then the database name, which in this case I'm going to put as uh, just so we know. And I'm not going to use this, but this is how you'd use it. And I'm going to show you how, how this is going to work out in a second. So let me save this. I'm going to close it. I'm going to close everything else. And the first thing now we need to do is jump back to models db.js and we need to set up our database connection. Or if it fails, we need to, we need to display an error. To do this, first of all, we need to bring mongoose. So const mongoose. This is going to be equals require. And then I'm going to require mongoose like so. Close this. And then we need to do mongoose connect. And then inside here, we can bring the variable name that we just created. And to do this, we can do process.env.mongo db underscore uri. This is literally the variable name that we just created in dot env. So th this is how I'm going to grab it. And if you want to use the local one, if you have installed it, you can just do underscore local and that should work as well. And now the next bit would be, uh, we need to put two options. The first one is use new URL parser and set this to true. And the second one is use, use unified topology. And that needs to be set to true as well and close. And now we can do const database equals mongodb mongoose dot connection. And now we can check whether we have a connection on, so we can do db dot on error. Then we can console log something. And I think this is the example from mongodb. So we can do console dot error dot bind. And then inside here, console comma connection error. And if we have a successful connection, we can do database dot once. And if you connect to the database, we can do database dot once. And then inside here, open function and with curly brackets, close this. And with curly brackets inside, we can just do console dot log and then we can say connect it like so. And that's it. Now we can reuse this database file in our controllers. We only have one controller, but if you have multiple, you can just reuse it, which is great. Save this, jump back to controllers and movie controller. And the first thing that I'm going to do is require the database. So require, and then inside here dot dot dash, and then models, and then database like so. Close this. And the next thing that we need to do is create and require or movie model. To do this, let's first of all require it. So I'm going to do, so I'm going to do const and then movie, and then this is going to be equals require. And then we're going to require dot dot slash models slash movie. Let's create this file now. This is going to be the movie schema. So in models, oh, I've already created it. So in models, movie.js is the one that we want. And this is where we're going to do the movies schema. I'm going to keep this very basic for this tutorial. So we're only going to have a few properties such as name, description, category, and thumbnail. First of all, we need to include mongoose in here. So let's do const mongoose equals require, and then we require mongoose like so. And then we can do const before we write anything else. I'd like to export the uh, mongoose model. And to do this, we can do module.export equals and then mongoose dot model, which we're going to create now. And then the model is going to be called movie. 
and then this is gonna be movie schema like so let's create this movie schema now and to do this we can do const movie schema is equals new mongoose dot schema and then inside here with curly brackets we can start creating the schema okay so let's start by creating a name so every single movie is going to have a name and this is going to be a type of string and if you want to you can have it as required so you can either do required like so this is required or you can do it let's create the description now and for the description let's do type of string and let's do required you can either do it required set to true and that would also work did i do something okay i've missed a comma here so you definitely need a comma description and let's create the other two the next one is going to be category and it's going to be slightly different because i want to be able to have multiple categories so let's do a comma first of all category and this is going to be type of array and then this can be required as well so true like so and the last one is going to be thumbnail so potentially i can just copy one of these because thumbnail is going to be a type of string so thumbnail type of string required this field is required that's absolutely fine i'm just going to do it like this for shorter so let me remove this comma as well so every single field is required and when you set data you will need to provide every single one otherwise it's going to give you a validation error which is a good thing that's why mongoose is great okay now that we have a database setup or schema setup we could go and concentrate on the movie controller to start with the first one as we call the list movies let me comment it first of all so we know what it does and to do this i'm just going to put a comment in here so let me do this and the first one is going to be the route so we're going to be using api slash movies for this one and this is going to be sorry this is using a get method so i can do get and what i want to do is get all movies like so okay now that we know what this now that we know what this router does one thing that i forgot to mention is that when we created the database and we required it in here you could have checked whether everything is working in the command line so if you saved and if you said connected that's good but if something was wrong it'll probably just give you an error but this means that we actually have a connection to our database and we can start using it okay now let's concentrate on this route here which is going to get all movies but before we do that we don't actually have any movies to get so there are a couple of ways of inserting data into mongodb you can do it through the compass application or we can do it through the atlas in here we can do brass we can go brass collections we could potentially create a collection manually in here create a database manually here and a collection and insert the data just like here insert document that's a database that i had from a previous tutorial but what i'm going to do instead is i'm going to create a super quick function that is going to insert some data for us and the reason i'm going to do that is because i've already prepared some data which if you want to follow along you can copy and paste so i've copied some uh, movie titles from imdb and to insert some data i'm just going to create a function here and then we can remove it make sure that you remove this function as you don't want uh, to insert movies all the time so what i'm going to do is async and this is going to be a function and let's call it insert movies and inside here we need to wrap everything into a try catch try catch and inside the try we can do await and we can use the movie model that we created so await movie dot insert many and inside here we set an object like so and i'm not going to do anything with the error what you can do is just console dot log and i'm just going to log the error like so but this is what's important now here and what i'm going to do is insert an array of 
database movies and let me first show you how that looks like. So if I grab one first of all and our object is basically following the model that we created in here. So movies, as you can see, we have name, description, category, thumbnail. So that's what it does. Name, description, category. In category, we can have different categories and so on. This is what we're going to do. And I'm going to list a few more. I've already made the list, so I'm going to copy and paste it. And I'm actually going to comment it for you so you can have it as well if you want, wish to copy it. So I'm going to paste it here. As you can see, we have a couple of movies. That's all good. And the last thing that we need to do is run this function. So if I put it here at the bottom, so insert movies, we run the function. If we save this, hopefully, I, I assume that I don't even have to refresh the page or anything like that. If we go back to MongoDB and refresh. Okay, as you can see, we have the movies database automatically created. And this movies database has a collection of movies and it has 10 documents that we just inserted, as you can see. And the good thing about MongoDB is that it adds a unique identifier for every single movie, which can be quite helpful and we'll probably use later on. And that's pretty much it. As you can see, the arrays is working here. So we have drama, romance, and so on. Okay, let's have a look at how we can actually get this data in a JSON format. I'm going to remove this actually and go back to the project. And I'm going to remove this because I don't want to be inserting any more movies, but I'm going to comment it for you just in case you want it. So this is going to be in the project. And from now on, I'm going to be using Postman because we're only going to be dealing with JSON data. And this is going to make it so much easier to do the requests. So let me show you one of the reasons that I like using Postman and there are, there are many alternatives out there. In fact, you can do it in Visual Studio Code as well. So one of the reasons that I like Postman is because if you have an account, all your collections will sync. Uh, if you go to, if you go on your laptop and you make some changes, and then if you go on your PC, uh, they will sync, which is great. And that's why I really like using it. And I have an account. But as I said, there are other good alternatives out there, but this is what I'm going to be using today. Okay, so let me explain. So first of all, I've created a new collection here, which you can create by, by clicking the new button here. And I have just have a few different requests. So we're going to be using today get, post, patch, and delete. When I click on get, all I've done is basically I've created a new tab. I've select get in here and I've put the URL, which is localhost with a page of 5000 and then slash API slash movies. So this is what I've done here. And one thing that, and that's pretty much it for the get. As we go along, I'll explain the other ones as well. So for the get, all we want to do is send the request and get something back. At the moment, I'm not sure whether this is running. Oh, I must have removed the send, res.send, and then, hello. This is why it was breaking, I think. Okay, so if I send one more, we get hello world, just like you would in the browser. But now I want to actually get the data from the database. To do this, it's actually fairly simple to do. Um, what we can do is wrap everything into a try catch and press enter. And inside here, we're going to do our first query, which is find. So we can do const and you can call this data, movies, whatever. So I'm going to call it movies. So we know what we are getting back. And this is going to be equals await. Then movie, we're going to be using the movie model schema and then, and then dot find. And then what we want to find is everything. In order to find everything, you just put curly brackets and that's it. This is where you usually add your filters, which we're going to explore in a second as well. So that's how you find everything. And then if you want to chain more stuff like limit, you can do so if you wish to. And I'm going to show you that in a minute as well. But that's all we need for now. All we need to do is get all the movies. And now to display them as JSON, what I can do is res.json. And then inside here, I can just pass the movies like so. And that's it. For the error, what we can do is res.status. And we can just put the status to be 400 and then dot JSON. And then inside here, we can just put a message, something like message and then error. Let's change this as well, just to be like, so I think that's better. And we are grabbing basically the error from here and that's it. So if I was to save this, 
tidy up a little bit, go back to Postman and send one more time. As you can see, I'm getting all the movies in here and they are in a nice format. We have the IDs, the name, description, and so on. So that's brilliant. Now let me show you how we can do a few photos. Now to do that, I want to use parameters just like most of the APIs out there. For example, you might want to limit the results that are coming back. And to do this, you might want to put a parameter of, so question mark, and you can do limit. And let's say equals two. And as you can see, this is added in here as well, whichever is easy for you. And you can stack a few more if you wish, and we will do as well. And let's say if I set limit two, I want only two results to appear. At the moment, if I take this out, and let me zoom out a little bit. At the moment, we have a lot of results, as you can see. And if I send this, it doesn't do anything. We're just getting all the results. And let me now show you how we can grab this parameter and use it. If we go back to the project. In order to grab the parameter, we can use rest.query. So if I was to do console.log, if I was to do rec.query, then if I save this, and if I send this again, one more time, send, and if I go to the command line, and re did I restart? Save, send, let me restart. Let me send one more time. Okay, we go back. And as you can see, it says a listening on port 5000, connected and a limit two. So now we can use this to do a simple query or to add a simple filter. To do this, we can actually chain the limit to this here, movie find. So what I can do is dot limit and I can pass the limit from here. So for example, I could do reg dot query and then limit. Now there is a problem with this and this probably won't work. And this is because the limit comes as a string, but we need it as number. So let me show you if I was to save this and send, I think it's just breaking. I mean, it should give us an error. I don't know why node one is being a little bit slow for me, but okay. As you can see, nothing is actually happening. It's not working. And this is because this is treated as a string. So what I'm going to have to do is convert this into an integer. So what we can do, we can actually set a default one so I can do let and inside here we can destructure this object by doing limit. And then this is going to be equals rec dot query like so. So we're destructuring the object and I can actually give this a default value of let's say 10. So if we don't put any limit, the default value can be 10. So I can put this in here. And the next thing that we need to do is if we do get a limit, we want to convert it into an integer. And to do this, we can do, let's say const and oh, because I called the limit here, we might have to call it something else now. So let's see, let's see, maybe limit records. Limit records, and this is going to be equals pass int. And inside here, we put int. Now, instead of having the limit, because I renamed it, I'm going to have to put it in here. So let's see what happens now. So if I go back and if I send, we should be getting only two results. As you can see, only two results appear. But if I was to remove this, the limit, send, we're getting all the results, which is the default number that we set here. Now, there is another way of which you can do this. You could potentially do it by doing if statements. So let's say if limit does not exist, then maybe you can set limit to be equals 10 and that would be pretty much the same. But maybe you can do more complicated stuff in here if you wish to. So I'm going to remove this and just keep it simple. So this is going to be equals 10. And the next thing that I want to do is add a skip. And the skip is going to basically make it so we can have different pages for the results. So maybe we can have page one with results 10, and then we can have page two with results 10, and they will be different. This is great for usually for pagination. So let me show you how this is going to work. So we have limit, and now I can add page. As a default, it's going to be set to one. Now to use the page, we're going to have to do some trickery in here. So what we can do is const and I'm going to call this skip and this is going to be equals page minus one. And that would be equals time the limit here, which is at the moment set to 10 as default. All right, let's have a look at how we can change this now. So I can 
use the skip and after the limit here we can do dot skip and we can pass the number from here so that should be good enough and look at what happens now if i go back we send we get 10 records as the food but if i want to limit it to two equals two we get two results but if i want to do pagination i could potentially do ampersand to create another parameter and this is going to be page and let's equals this to one which is the default so nothing should change but casino royale is here and titanic is here but if i change it to two you should see that the results are now changing and this should be very helpful for pagination okay now that we've done this i want to take this slightly further and do custom queries like for example what if i wanted to search for specific category or maybe i want to search through the entire database and i want to find i don't know something like james bond now to do filters is actually fairly easy but i'm going to do something slightly more complicated now for the filters just to explain it what you have to do is let's say if you want to filter through categories what you have to do is grab another parameter let's say category and when we grab this this is going to be a string which is absolutely fine so i can use this and i can say okay inside the database where we have categories category sorry we want to pass the category that we're getting from the reg.query and let's see what happens so if i was to go back and say category action let's say that and if i put question mark category equals action and if i search you will see that we are only getting action 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 and so on so all the movies that we have in here action but let's say we want adventure only so i can just put adventure and all the adventure movies will come up which is kind of great so this is how you can do that but i actually want to take this even further and i want to be able to search through the entire database to do this it's a little bit more complicated we're gonna have to build a query for everything because we have the categories here and we're gonna have a custom query and so on so in order to be able to do that we're gonna have to index everything in our schema so let me show you how we can do that undefined let's remove all this first of all save it and let's go back to a schema which is in the models movie and inside here uh, you can do all sorts of stuff you can make it specific to maybe the name and the description but i want to go through everything so what i can do here is i can use the movie schema dot index and then what i can do is a little bit crazy but what i can do is in double quotes i can do dollar sign asterisk asterisk column and in single quotes we need to put text like so and that would basically index everything in our database now let me show you how we can use this it's a little bit tricky but if i save this first of all and if i go back to find here let me just first show you how we can do it and then i'm going to build a few different queries so in find if you want to find everything you do that no problem but if you want to search in the whole database what we have to do is in curly brackets we need to put dollar sign text quote and then another curly bracket set in here and then inside here we need to put search and then the parameter that we want to search for so for example i can search for james hopefully if we go back and send we should be getting james bond which is great and i can do the same for the other ones so this searches through the whole database and maybe i can just do uh, action and that should also do it action send and that searches through the entire database and show all the action movies and uh, let me show you maybe uh, if we put joker one more time and send this we have the dark knight which is absolutely fine so it looks through the description and it finds it for us now to be able to do this from the url what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a query parameter just q q for query so i'm just going to leave it as two and then whatever we set here so it could be i don't know it, it could be joker obviously this is not going to work now but let's build it up and make it work if we go back to build our queries i'm going to first of all going to grab this because this is hard coded at the moment so that won't work for us so let me grab this and let's start building our query now i'm going to create an object that is basically going to contain the whole query so let's do let query this is going to be our object and then inside here we just open and close curly brackets 
if we want to start building a query, what we can do, for example, for the category, which we've already created. So that query is going to be inserted into here, into find. So what I can do for the category, because we've already created that, I can do, if we have category, they want to insert this category inside the query. So I can do query dot category, and this will be equals the category that we get. That's it. So here is our query here. And hopefully if we go, in fact, you know what, we can, we can console log this as well. So let's do console log. And I can just console log the query just so we can see what we're getting. So if we send this, uh, nothing, nothing is happening because we don't have a category. Action, send, and we're getting action, which is cool. And if I go to the console, you, sh you can see that we have an empty object, first of all, and then we have the category set to action, which is good. Let's build the other one now, the query, which we can build in here. So you can name this whatever you like, by the way, I'm just going to put it as Q short for query. So to do this, I'm going to do it in here, sorry, in here. And I can do if the same thing, basically if query, uh, we can do, we can do if query, let's say query. And by the way, this is a shorthanded if statement, but we can do, we can do it this way as well. So if query, we can do equals, and then we can paste the text that we had earlier. So that would be the text that queries everything in our database. And that would be the dollar sign text column, and then dollar sign search column. And then we pass the query like so close. This should be good to go. And now I'm going to remove this by the way. And now that's inserted into the query as well. And if you go back to postman and send, everything is working. So let's search for scream, maybe something in here. So let's go, for example, in the matrix and let's say something like hacker. I'm going to use this query. So we're going to do question mark Q for query equals hacker. And if I do send, you'll see that the only result we're getting is the matrix, which is working. You can definitely stack up all the parameters together and they should work as well. So you can say, maybe I want to search for everything crime and I want to limit the result with two. So we're only going to get two crime movies or, and now I can even add the page and that can be equals two, but I don't know. Oh, we do have more movies. Okay. So that was lucky. We do have uh, more movies. If I put one, you will see that they change and so on. You can definitely add more parameters like this. But one thing that I noticed just now is that if I was to move the category at the bottom, so maybe that needs to be added last in the query, that seems to work a little bit better with filtering the category. So for example, I'm, I'm searching for everything crime where limit is two, page is one and category is biography. So this is super specific, but as you can see, it seems to be working, which is great. And now we spend too much time on this. Let's move on to the next one, which should be quite quick to do, where we have post, patch and delete. Let's go back to a code. And the first thing that we need to do is create our new route. And to do this, we can go back to routes and inside here, we can start creating them. Let's copy this by doing all shift and down. And I'm going to do route dot. This time it's going to be post and I'm going to post on exactly the same page. So API movies movie controller and this one, let's call it insert single movie. This is far too specific, but I think it's going to work well. And now if we want to create this controller, insert single movie, we can go under movie controller.js and create in here. So I'm going to copy all this and paste it. And what I'm going to do that stays the same, that goes to post and we're posting single movie and this should be replaced. So export insert single movie and then we do the magic in here. Now for inserting movies, it's actually fairly simple. We need to be able to grab some data and insert it into a database. So let me show you how we can do that. First of all, obviously we're going to be using the movie schema. So this one here, and what we can do is create a new movie object. So const, let's say new movie, and this is going to be equals new movie. And then inside here, we want to grab some details. So for example, we need to grab the details just like in our schema, which is here, name, description, category, and thumbnail. They are all required 
So that's important. And let's have a look how we can grab them. So to do that, we can do name and then we can do rec dot body and then name. I'm going to show you how we can send them in a second as well, but this is how we're going to grab them. And then I can duplicate this three more times. And this one is going to be changed to description. So let's put description. This one is going to be changed to category. Let's change it to category. And then this is going to be thumbnail. Thumbnail and thumbnail. And we don't actually, sorry, we don't need that. We need commerce in here instead. Okay. That's looking good. And now to insert this, all we can do is wrap everything into a try catch again. And then I can just do a wait and then new movie dot save. That's it. That's going to insert the movie. And again, I'm going to do this here. So rest dot status 400 dot JSON message error. And I need to change this to be shortened to error. You can call it whatever you like. And that's it. So if you go back to Postman, what you have to do is create a new tab. Make sure that re the request is set to post. Make sure that your URL is localhost 500, 5000 API movies. And then click on body, click on raw, and make sure that this is select as JSON. Now, inside here, as you can see, I've already have one already written. What I have is a simple object here with the name, description, category, and thumbnail. And if I was to send this now, something isn't working. And this is because Oh, and I think this could be because we are not doing anything with this, right? So we need to rest dot JSON or we need to do something. Um, we need to rest dot JSON this and we can just display the result. So let's do that. Make sure. Okay. This is all looking good. Let me try one more time. Send. And as you can see, we have the record here, which we inserted and this should give us a unique identifier, as you can see which is pretty cool. So now if, if I was to jump to the database super quickly, if you go to the collections and scroll down to the bottom, you will see the new record that we just created. I'll zoom in a little bit, but uh, yeah, you'll see that we created a new record, which is good. And let me now show you how we can update it super quickly. So to do this, we can go back to route, create a new route. This is going to be router.patch. Uh, this is going to go to API movies, but this time we want to specify which movie we want to update. In order to do that, I'm going to use the ID and I'm going to show you how we can grab this ID from the URL in a second and update it. So instead, instead of insert, let's put it as update, update single movie and save this and let's create the controller. So inside here, I'm going to copy all of this. So we can do API movies and we need the ID in this case. And this is going to be patch single movie or update single movie. And then inside here, we need to update this insert to update single movie. And in order to grab parameters, we can do let, let's store in parameter ID, param ID. And this is going to be equals rec dot params dot ID. This is how we're grabbing the ID from the URL, the one that we put here and the one that we're going to send with Postman in a second. So if we have this, then we also want to be able to update something like the name. So I can do let name and this could be equals rec dot body and then name. So we want to be able to grab the new name and update it. Now we can wrap everything into try catch like so. And inside here, we can say maybe const update movie equals await. And then we use the movie dot update one this time. And then inside here, we want to say which movie we want to update. So we can select it by the ID. So to do that, we put ID and then we actually pass the ID from the URL with the parameter ID. And then we want to do, and then we want to update the name with the new name. So we can do name. This is in the database and we want to pass the actual name that we're going to update. And last but not least, uh, we're missing a curly bracket here. Okay. 
remove that. So curly bracket here. So we have curly bracket here, curly bracket here, curly bracket here, curly bracket here. Okay, this is all good. Alt error, I'm going to do exactly the same as the rest. And also we need to respond with the result. So rest.json and then we do update movie. Like so. We could put this as data to be honest, but that should do the job. So now if I go back to Postman and if I go to patch, which is my update one, my update collection, what you have to do is put the URL, put the ID that you want to update and then pass a new name. So in this case, I have this record that I want to update. I'm going to grab the object, the ID. I want to update this. So I'm going to put it in here on the URL and I have the name set up to the Dark Knight and I'm going to send. As you can see, the result goes acknowledge, true, modified field count, one, and so on, which is good. So technically, if I was to refresh MongoDB and go back to the bottom, you'll see that we've updated the name and we can do exactly the same thing with the description, category, thumbnail, and so on. Now, let me show you the last thing, which is how to delete a movie by ID. So we're going to try to delete this by ID. Very similar to what we've just done with the parameter. I'm going to copy all this. I'm actually going to copy everything and see whether we can modify. So this is going to be movie API, API movies ID, delete single movie, and then we grab the parameter, but we need to change uh, the query here a little bit. This needs to be changed to delete one instead. And we just need to put the ID that we want to delete. So we don't need the name. And I think Oh, instead of updated, maybe we can just put movie or data. Data, like so, it doesn't matter. Save it. And now if I was to grab this ID one more time, copy. And if I was to paste in here, so we have body, raw. Sorry, this is not the one. Uh, I need to go to delete. Okay, so we have request as delete. We have the same URL. I just need to change the ID in here. And that's it. So I don't need to do anything else actually. So if I send this, it looks like we, we cannot get delete. And this is because we probably didn't create the delete. Oh, okay. We need to update this first of all to delete. I was rushing it and we need to put this into a route. So this needs, needs to go to router.delete. And then API movies ID and then delete single movie like so. And we should be good to go. Save, save this and let's go back. Hopefully everything is running. Okay. Let's resend. Deleted count one and now this should be gone. This result should be gone. If I refresh. And if I go back to the bottom, you will see that the one that we just deleted is gone, which is great. All right. One more thing before we go, uh, if we go back to the list movies, what I wanted to show you is that you can actually also add the page and the limit inside here as well. So to make it a little bit more professional in, in an object like so, so curly brackets everywhere, and then we can do page. We can grab the page numbers, which is here as default is one. Then we can do comma and then we can do the limit. And then we can grab the limit here, limit record, put that, and then we can pass the movies. That might make it look a little bit better. If I was to go to get, send, and you will see that we're getting page one, limit, then movie. So that's a little bit better. And if I was to say page equals two, you see that we're getting page two, but I don't, I probably don't have enough movies maybe. Um, and then let's say limit of three. Okay. Page one, limit three. If I say limit three and page two, that should work because I have enough movies for this. But as you can see, this changes, which is great. And the last thing that I wanted to show you is that if you want to use this in a real life application, I've just made a very simple fetch. Uh, request here is it's another file. I'm not going to explain this, but let me run it super quickly. So here is the document. And I'm basically fetching the API that we just made. 
they came up in here and everything seems to be working. And I have just a few images in this folder as well. And what I wanted to show you is that if we were to go to this HTML and if I was to change the URL to I don't know, limit to two, save this, go back, you will see that we're getting Casino Royale and Titanic and you can work with this a little bit more. So if I was to do Q for query and put matrix equals and we just get the matrix like so. And that's going to be the end of this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something new. Don't forget to smash the like, consider subscribing to my channel and comment below. 